it's across the globe, particularly in Europe, America, and Australia. Here in South Africa, paganism is growing. But what is paganism? Dana, let me talk to you right away. What is paganism? We sat and talked for a while. Help me out. Uh, paganism is pre-Christian religion. It is a religion that worships deities of old, but is mostly aligned to nature and um, the elements in nature. I'm sure people out there sitting and saying, she said religion, Felicia also said religion. Why would they call it religion? And many perceptions are it is not religion. Can you explain? I think it's a religion because of the element of worship, most definitely. Uh, because several elements are adhered to fairly strictly in terms of ritual, in terms of seasonal rites. There's a strong ethical basis to this religion, which most religions do have. So it has a number of features that make it a religion. You had the Pagan Federation in South Africa? Yes. How do you join it and what type of person becomes a member? The Pagan Federation is open to all members of the public. Um, but I think it is ideally for people who believe that they are pagans and want to network with pagans. The Federation exists uh, for the main purpose to network with our members and to act as an authoritative voice on their behalf. When I hear the word pagan, and I don't know if anyone in the audience here feel the same way. I'm worried that the perception tends to be heathen, Satanist, true or false? Bruno? No, it's false completely. I mean, the, the origin of the word pagan is from the word, Latin word paganus, and paganus means country dweller. And it was, I mean, it acquired its derog derogatory meaning um, quite a long time back about the, the people that still lived in the country when the, relig uh, the religion of the cities were, was Christianity. Those people that lived in the country and practiced the old ways. So they were referred, you know, in a derogatory fashion as pagans. Um, but it doesn't have, I mean, pagans are not Satanists. You say you are an eclectic witch. Yes. What does um, that mean? Uh, uh, well, in the sense that um, I don't follow any particular tradition. I mean, within, within witchcraft, within Wicca, Within paganism, there's a lot of different traditions, and uh, I don't follow one per se. I follow kind of numerous ways, uh, very much on, based on my instincts and what I see around me, rather than what I learn from books. Angelique, the word witch carries negative connotations already. Many people, and I'm going to be very open and blunt, many people are thinking of someone on a broomstick at night coming <laughs> to your house. <laughs> well, um, that couldn't actually be further from the truth. A witch to me um, is a nature-loving, nature-honoring on person. The reason why there's such a negative connotation to the word witch is because of the burning times. Um, a very bad period in humanity's history. There was such a fear connected to that word. And it took them a couple of hundreds of years to actually instill that fear into people's minds. So we can't help. You hear the word witch and you think, oh my God, you should must ride on a broomstick. That's <laughs> true. So, but, but we don't. And I think that's why we're all sitting in front of you here tonight. No because offense, but somehow I'm thinking of someone, no Bruno, you'll excuse me, I'm thinking of someone wearing the cap that Bruno is wearing right now, barefooted, but I'm, all you're missing right now is the broom, Bruno. Well, give me a broom, I'll ride it. <laughs> Let me clarify the broom situation to I'm you. I definitely would love you to do that. In fact, Beverly, now that you added, why you do that? Why don't you clarify it? The broom situation comes from an ancient rite of broom jumping. And the broom, the broom jumping actually happened during a wedding. And after the year of being together as man and wife, it's a year and one day that you're together, what happens is you have to jump over the broom. And the olom takes the broom, which is like the master, and takes the broom, gives it to the bride and the groom, and they have to jump over the broom. That's where the broom comes from with witches. And you say you're not a pagan. Well, they, I, some people think I'm a pagan. I'm, I don't follow any specific religion. I follow what um, my initial coven from my family sent to me and have taught me for many years as a fourth generation. So I'm just basically a witch that's followed whatever the coven has put down, which is many, many generations old. I saw people walking around with flowers here. What the, what's the flower all about? <laughs> and they're going to give me one. I mean, I'd love to know what's going to happen to me in the future. <laughs> 
the, the, the flower is, is, is an ancient tradition that was passed down through my family and, and what we do, what we've always done is if somebody needs to know something, they go to the Olom and they take the flower with them. A flower usually that they've picked from the garden, which some people have not done here, they've picked them from outside. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually take that to the Olom, usually as many as eight, and the Olom will then read those flowers for you. And from those flowers, all the energies and your future past to be will be revealed to the Olam through those flowers. That's why they have flowers mm -hmm. with them. Jenny, you're an eclectic witch too, am mm -hmm. I right? That's right. Felicia. And uh, somehow it's also affected you in many ways. Your children are being persecuted at school? Um, to a small extent. It hasn't been very major. But the thinking is that more and more schools are coming to accept because of the constitution, because they're constitutionally protected, that the children have the right to do what they do. The majority of the schools are concerned about the Satanism aspect. And the big problem, Felicia, is to get people to understand that we don't have anything to do with Satanism. It's not even a concept we, we recognize. I think that's why I wanted to have the program. Let's clarify that while we edit right now. How do you change that perception? I know when I met with Dana, I said, maybe change the name. Because the minute I hear the word pagan, I already think of other things. I'm at me and many others. Let's hear from some members of the audience here. How do we change the perceptions? And anyone who agrees with what you're hearing or disagrees with it, you have the right to, to talk. Talk to me if you disagree with it too. I Let's think the only way to change a perception is to, as we are going, is going public. And we do have open festivals that any member of the public can join and see exactly what we do and that we do not hold any satanic ritual. Our festivals are held during the day. First of all, Satanists practice at night under the cover of dark. Halloween and being one of them. Pardon? Halloween. Um, we celebrate Halloween as well. Is that one of the festivals that go with um, the pagan? Yes, it's, it's, it's all part movement. of the seasonal changes. I would, uh, again, you know, it, it, many people try to play safe in life and want to go into things that no one is going to criticize you for. Uh, why would anyone go into a religion that obviously many people would say, Felicia, stop even using the word religion. I can hear some folks out there in t television land say, stop calling it a religion, call it something else. It's a what way. do you say today? I call it a way. I don't, I don't call it a religion, I call it a way. A way of life. A way, yes. It's, it's what we've always used, it's just the way. That is the way that we are. That is the way that we've chosen to continue, even through persecution, even through our families being ousted from various county homes, that sort of thing. It still is, it's just a way. Donna, you don't look like you agree. I cannot, I cannot agree. Um, aspects of divinity are present. Strong theological um, concepts are present uh, in the way that one worships, whether you do this in a coven or you do this on a solitary basis. Um, whether you see divinity manifest in nature or in a more formal pantheistic system, as soon as the concept of divinity enters, there is, no doubt, a religious framework. Any similarities between Sangoma and Pagan? I think that when one looks very deeply at the root of Paganism and its uh, divine ancestors, the similarities are very, very obvious. Both employ the concept of ancestors or within European Paganism we refer to the concept of the old ones or the ancient ones which is the African form of ancestor. When one goes closer into looking at the divining arts of the Sangoma, that is very much the divining arts of the witch, of the European witch. And I think that the polarization that has existed between so-called European witches and African witches is not a true reflection. I think that ultimately they are actually the same thing and the fear that surrounds them is most definitely the same thing. Mm. And the persecution as a result of the fear very, very definitely the same thing. Well, Beverly, I want you to start thinking about this. I heard that you can even convert someone to a different sex. 
boy. I've <laughs> always wanted to be a man. Thing. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> and if After I could the do break, that, I'd be a millionaire, trust me. <laughs> I'm not so. Too. Someone said that. It's you, called you change from shape shifting. It's shape shifting. It's not into a different sex. It's just oh, into I was looking forward different. to that. What is it? What is it then? <laughs> it's shape shifting. What does that mean? Taking you on a well, you change my shape. I want to change my legs. <laughs> no, 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 don't do the legs. Oh, don't oh. do the legs. <laughs> no. It, what is shape shifting? Shape shifting is either you shape shift into when you're in the astral, when you've gone out of body into the astral and you become another form, either a dog or a cat or a bird or whatever, um, in order to move through the astral quicker. Or alternatively, shape shift into another form. It means take a spirit or what we call incorporate into the body and allow whoever it is that has come, either an, an olam or a master or someone from the past who was respected, let that person come through and give knowledge and understanding and discussions from the other side. That's more like it. Not Can you do joke. this for us later on? But after the break, we'll speak about one of the most influential pagan traditions, Wicca which is also otherwise known as witchcraft. We've been hearing this word witchcraft. We're going to be talking more about that. <laughs> Upstairs, they want you to change me into a real zebra. <laughs> a real zebra. <laughs> but before you, before you change me into that, um, can you be a Christian and a pagan at the same time? Can anyone answer that? I, I, do, I do respect the concept of the gods, but the fundamental tenet that paganism and Wicca is based on is the concept of the goddess, which does not exist in Christianity. Um, we do understand pagan similarities and the hijacking of Mary and the saints in various of the pagan rituals, but I'm afraid that I, I think it would be very difficult to reconcile those two faiths. What do you mean the, the hijacking of Mary? The, the no. Virgin Mary was one of the greatest pagan goddesses. She has been evidenced throughout deities. And when, when Christianity um, started to infiltrate the old religions and use the negative terminology of pagan, country dweller, country bumpkin, hick, is what pagan really means. It's really a derogatory term. And I, I would actually like to just say that if you consult your dictionary, you'll find one of two meanings. The first is that a pagan is anybody who does not accept the Christian monotheistic religion, and that includes Jews and Muslims. Hmm. So if hey, I don't Jewish touch the Muslims now, I don't want to be. I want to walk in the street now because I have had enough. Much as I love the folk, they are behind me all the time. Don't touch them now. No, so no, 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 no. If you if you basically don't accept Christianity, and it includes anything that doesn't. In other dictionaries, if you, if you look at them, it is somebody who just doesn't believe in a God. So the, Christianity with its patriarchy, uh, just as one aspect, would be very difficult to incorporate with goddess-orientated religions. Would you not agree? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, the paganism is a very kind of earth-positive thing. It sees, doesn't see the, uh, uh, the earth as this base material plane, which is negative, and spirit, anything that's spirit mm -hmm. is up there in the sky. Paganism is very much, um, divinity um, is, um, well, the earth is divinity manifest, and any form of life, anything, anything on earth is divinity manifest. So I think somewhere, I mean, in, in, in principle, I would agree, yes, you I can have a Christian pagan, but I think in, in, in practice, it will be pretty difficult, because at some stage, it will be a conflict. Look, it will definitely not be your orthodox Christian, but I have mm -hmm. definitely met Christian-orientated pagans. And um, like Bruno said, the normal concept in Christianity is that God is omnipotent and he's far away, mm -hmm. like he's distant from you. But I have met Christian pe slash pagans who feel closer linking to that God, but then they wouldn't be classified as your orthodox Christian. I'm sure that other Christians would not yeah. even call them Christians. Yeah. Beverly looks like she disagrees. No, I'm just talking from my point of view. I mean, I can't speak from anyone else other than my own point of view. I mean, I'm, I'm a Catholic, being a left-footer and being from Irish descent, obviously Catholic. 
and the, the particular entities that are channeled through me or the, the elements that come through me through shape-shifting, um, Sananda, who is known as internationally as the Christ consciousness, comes through and that's very definitely Christian. So I must say for me, I follow the way and, and the life of my ancestors, plus I also follow a Christian Catholic religion. I mean, I'm still apt to go in and light, light candles for Mary in, in my Catholic church and I have no problem in following both. Okay. Wicca is sometimes called the craft of Father Wise or simply the craft. Let's see this insert at home with Beverly Rhodes performing some of her rituals and rites. It's not necessarily a traditional wear. Um, it, is, it is what I have chosen to wear for this, although the colors are correct. Um, usually an initiate will wear green. I'm wearing white, which is a heavenly, heavenly suit because as an initiated Olam, which is an Olam is a master, Celtic master, um, we're allowed to wear the white. Sitting at a working altar, and it's a working altar very much so because it has been surrounded by everything else that, that, that I work with. And it is a working altar because I use it nearly every day and what we put onto the altar are items that we require. So the crystals that I use are used for centering, balancing and also if I call the corners which would be the north, south, west and east and then those that are actually at those corners would then use my crystals. Anna here my chant bring to me my new job as the curling smoke arises into your realms oh Dan I commit the spell manifest it back as mine I evoke my personal she to assist me this day I'm prepared to accept this magic as it happens it allows the spell to manifest in my realms by all the powers of the moon and the sun the stars, the earth and the sea, of all of Twisted Tree and Great Mother Earth, her lover and all that be, make the spell manifest for me, Landa. personal she as the smoke enters into other realms allow it to return to me Beverly, apparently the ritual you performed was to ultimately get a certain job did you get it yeah I got it I started on Friday can you help me get a big deal can I come for yes. a ritual that you can perform so yes, I can get yes. this, uh, this big contract you wouldn't even have to come to me. I could teach you how to do the ritual and you just do it yourself. Witches have been persecuted for centuries now. And even today's words such as the craft inspire fear amongst most educated individuals. In fact, most people forget education. Let's hear from the audience. Let's get some more input. I'd like to hear anyone against what they're hearing here. Yeah, you look like you're going to get me going here. All right. Felicia, it's very obvious that these people are telling us uh, what can never be believed, you know, because what they do with, they do with pretense in the first place, and they are not truthful, they are going out How do you first. know they are not truthful? They are not truthful because how can you be a pagan and at the same time be a Christian? That is not true. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mama together. That is the word of God. You cannot serve God and Mama together. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. It's two things. This is a spiritual thing that we are talking about here. So you cannot come out with pretense. So you see, their faces, they look very cool and calm, like what that lady said. He said, paganism or pagan is a way of life. It can never be, it can never be because you said just now that even they are being persecuted all over the world. How can it be a way of life when you are being persecuted? Interesting. Okay. Right. First of all, I want to say that paganism is a religion thousands of years before Christianity. All right? um, it has dated that, Christ, uh, that paganism is about 25,000 years old. So if you look at the, at the aspects of paganism was a religion first before Christianity came about. 
So we were there first. Pagans were there first, all right? And if you go and look and if you do any studies on paganism and Christianity, you will see that Christianity has actually taken over the whole religion. So, yes, there is nothing, there's no connotation towards the devil and God, mm -hmm. all right? Because in the first place, God, um, God and, and Satan is basically, is basically the same concept. Not the same concept, but out of God came Satan. We do not believe in Satan. Right? We do not accept Satan and there is nothing, there's nothing in our rituals and our rites which even glorify Satan. So, yes, um, if you look at it, Christianity is younger than paganism. Okay, yeah. go ahead, sir. Um, paganism never ever had a concept of Satan. Pa paganism, the devil, was, there was no such thing as the devil. When the Christianity came about, they, in, they invented the devil. He's their God, not our God. He's their dark God. Pagans don't believe in Satan at all. Nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Can I say that? I know I'm having people out there in TV land saying, how come she did not have those who are for and those who are against? I was really trying to get a program here where we better understand what it is all about. People who experience and feel it all the way. And I'm not saying don't disagree. If you want to disagree, definitely do so. Uh, as you have also so clearly witnessed, this is one problem where we've allowed people to come out of the closet mm -hmm. and given them a shoulder and a, 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 an open window for them to talk. Why are you laughing when I talk about coming out of the closet? Are you coming out of the closet? Are you coming out of the closet? <laughs> Not on this show. Can I get another comment from you? A weekend read says, any time none, do as you will. So if um, by being a Christian and a pagan at the same time, if you don't harm anybody, so then you can be. It just uh, depends how other Christians are going to react on that. But if you don't harm anything, you can be what you will. Bruno? Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. Why is there so much dwelling on the concept of Satan? I mean, I think, um, and, and, and I actually really object to say, you know, I'm not being truthful. I am being truthful, otherwise I wouldn't sit here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not here to lie. I'm not here to kind of spread lies. I am here as I am, all right? Mm -hmm. And I don't understand. I was brought up um, as a Catholic. And I don't understand, when I was 12 years old, I, I started not to understand what is this concept of Satan. I don't understand it. It's foreign to me. I don't believe the universe is bad. I believe the universe is, and the universe is perfect, and the universe is good. I, don't, I, don't, I can't even begin to conceptualize of such a thing as Satan. So why is this in, incredible dwelling on that concept? It makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. You know, and to have always to answer back to people, are you a Satanist? Are you a Satanist? It actually becomes incredibly boring. Mm -hmm. But you don't yeah. even have to, baby. <laughs> but you do. <laughs> but Bruno, Bruno, would not you say often. that... Um, we live in a society where people tend to believe those who look and sound like them, but yeah. because we have many people who yeah. tend to be conservative and yeah. traditional yeah. in their way of thinking and dress, yeah. when someone like you comes around, yeah. it is like, whoa. Yeah. When right. Dana walked in today yeah. wearing a suit, yeah. I was thrown off because <laughs> to me, to be honest with you, anyone who is a pagan tends to have a certain uniform. <laughs> for lack of a better I, I, I word. And, um, and, I know, and when I saw you, and when Dana walked in with her husband, who looked like a Wall Street uh, merchant, <laughs> I, I was completely thrown off. Well, what I want to respond to and say is that um, this is our form of shape-shifting, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we dress appropriately for the occasion, but we do wear robes. We do have, we do have a dress code, in certain areas, but we do live in a normal world. I eat post toasties for breakfast and I use Colgate when I brush my teeth. No, and no, we no weeds and things like brain. that, huh? No, no, no. Quite, quite normal. Possibly this is the first program that has dared to ultimately say, let's talk about it. So you are obviously going to have people coming out a little more aggressive possibly than you would have expected because this is the first time we've said, let's talk. And I've, I've always wanted to do that. Let's Why hear the gentleman there. Felicia, what I would like to hear from them is to take away that wealth of religion from it because what I think it's a satanism, you know, they're just copying that satanism. Yes. Then they're trying to convince us. Can someone, 
Okay. And another thing, Felicia, <laughs> this guy is talking about 25,000 years ago. Where were you in 25,000 yeah. years Where ago? Where were you? I was not there. That's why I said you are trying to convince us of something that you know that we cannot prove. Even your certificate. It is proven. It is proven. So you are playing a satanism no, 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 game no, no, no. here. It's I proven. Another thing about Satan. All right. Listen to what. Listen to what I'm saying. My read, the way I'm living, is that I am allowed to do anything I want to, as long as I harm none, not even myself, no plant, no animal, nobody else. All right. If this was Satan. He would turn it around and he would say, kill everybody, do kill bad everybody. things. I am not a bad person. All right, you understand? And I cannot do that. Okay, let, let's, yeah, I, there was somebody who was trying to ask yeah. a question. For, yeah. Yeah, you have, one of the biggest problems that you have, and I think you mentioned it, um, if you're not for the Christian God, then you are automatically for Satan. Mm. This, is a, this is a rule made up by somebody else. I don't live under that rule. I mean, you know, it's like me coming to you and saying to you, well, if you don't play ping pong, then you obviously are an alcoholic. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It doesn't apply to me. In all fairness to them, why then do you find that Hinduism... Uh, I'm not in touch with the Muslims anymore, as I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the other religi religions are not quite criticized possibly as hard as paganism is. Can anyone explain that? Maybe we should have invited some of the folks from Rema here. <laughs> Yeah. Christianity is a Western religion, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's in the West. The West it comes from the West, and paganism, as we speak, of being Europe, well, us being European descent, is also a Western religion. So, and it was, it was a threat to the to the Christians. It was the, the religion that they had a fight against to become the premier religion. It's become the dominant so, religion area. It, it was that's why it became an issue for the Christians that paganism still existed. <coughs> it was a, it was a, an enemy. Felicia, Felicia well, can it I looks just like it's, can, can I, I just go to a break and then we will we'll continue mm -hmm. further. And I really would like to ensure that we get down to the root of it. Really, perceptions need to be cleared at home and here in the studio. So after the break, we'll deal a little bit more also with druidry, shamanism, and ordinism. Wow. If we look at the San or Bushman people, these are people who love nature, very close to nature, very simple people. Okay, it looks like we're moving here now. What are all those isms I was talking about? I'm kind of lost. Odinism, let's hear what it is. In paganism, there are many different paths, you know, different, different pantheons of gods. And Odinism is just one of them. It's just um, from the northern country, Scandinavia. It comes from there. It still belongs to witchcraft? Paganism. Paganism. It's a, it's a, a path of paganism. There was another one again. What is the other ism? Shamanism. 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 Let's talk about shamanism. Is that what you're into? Yeah, let's ditch that in because uh, shamanism, which is pagan, has been in the country for 25,000 years. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the San or Bushman people, these are people who love nature, very close to nature, very simple people who have a very sophisticated, very well-formed spiritual and religious practice. Now, they've been persecuted. They have been almost wiped out to extinction by Christian settlers. I think that's appalling. However, to, to focus on their paganism, they have practiced a completely pagan form of trance dance, of working with the spirits, working with their ancestral spirits, I have been initiated into some of their practices and I am profoundly moved by them. Mm. And I believe that they were the first and original people of Southern Africa. And I believe that... Mm, the Bushmen, you mean? The, the Bushmen. Mm -hmm. And it is only in the last 2,000 years that in fact we've had other pagan people come into the country, the uh, black African chieftains, if I may call them that. And mm -hmm. they too, and they are the roots of this country. Mm. They've, they've practiced their own well-formed paganism for two, one thousand, two thousand years. The Christianity, these imported religions that come from Europe and the Middle East, non-pagan religions, have been here for, well, let's say they've had a good influence for about two hundred years. They've been trying to dominate for the last hundred years. That's a tenth, a hundredth of the time of the pagans. Someone like Credo Mutua, where I wish he had come, 
And I must admit we have not invited him. Some other prom would love to have you, Babu Credo. You would like to talk, we'd like to talk to you. Where would he fall under? Credo Mutua very clearly defines himself as a pagan. He's very, very upfront about that. And um, I would like to state that in terms of the Pagan Federation, he has given us his blessing in terms of trying to recapture the religions of the past. But I think it's very important that we understand that this concept of paganism is essentially African mm -hmm. and European. It is the religion of the most ancient people wherever they were. It is the religion of a people who worshipped divinity in nature, who sowed their crops and who did things to the seasons, who respected the lunar and the solar cycles. So it's a way of life, as Beverly says. It's a way of life and it is a religion. Okay. Alicia, I just want to get back to one aspect that you were chatting about earlier. When you mentioned that, that the Satanists have seemed to have had a good go at us and the Christians are having a go at us because they think we're Satanistic. Um, I, I think I must mention it about the pentacle that is used in certain rituals and that is on my altar specifically. Um, if you look at that pentacle, or, you'll notice that the, the, the one section of the star, the one single one, points upwards if it's going to be used in any white ritual or any ritual for good, so to speak. Now the Satanists have taken that and they've turned it upside down. Now that, that particular pentagram has been used pre-Babylonian times. But how does this influence you? Okay, um, people believe in different things, in all fairness. You paganism, some people believe in astrology, some people believe in religion. Each morning you wake up, you pray to God to help you see your day through. What do you do? I just obviously ask the universe to assist me through this day. I don't have any specific person that I address it to. What do you do, Jenny? Felicia, we are very much a goddess-based um, religion. Goddess, and not yes, God. No, goddess. It's a matriarchal system, as it were. Hmm. And everything that we do is, in fact, honoring the goddess. When we get up in the morning, we look at the sun, we greet the dawn. That in itself is honoring the goddess. So the Christian honor God, who they say is male, to a great extent, who many Christians believe is male, so the pagans believe it's goddess, mm. this, not, this woman. No. Not, not exclusively. exclusively. Not exclusively. Um, but it is both. There is a goddess and there, there is a god. Mm. Or there are many goddesses. It just depends on your own specific path. But everything that we do honors those gods and goddesses. I see some link to feminism there. Maybe you, then you'd have a lot of women joining because it sounds like a feministic uh, way or religion. The, the essential root of paganism here is seeing the life force as a balance between male and female. Everything is balance. The rain is seen as a fertilizing uh, and enhancing focus. And the shrubs that grow is the growth of the female. So it is very much the sun's rays is seen as a fertilizing thing that allows green to grow. So everything is a polarity, is male and female. We see male and female in divinity and we see our god and goddess. We, we, the god and the goddess are the godhead, if you wish, or the goddess head. They are clearly divided into those roles. Um, so everything for us is male and female. So when you are at, uh, obviously in South Africa, you have companies that do pray sometimes. Uh, in the United States, I know you cannot do that all the time. But um, when people pray and you work for that company, what do you do? Do you pray with them? They have never been in that situation. I just want to ask that, uh, do you make a uh, sacrifice uh, and what do you slaughter when you make sacrifice? sacrifice? We don't. <laughs> Not at all. Sorry, one very, very strict rule, if you, if you look at the week and read what, what I am, I'm, I'm a CX witch, is that you are not allowed to draw blood. You are not allowed to do sacrifices. You are not allowed to go in a circle with a knife with the intent to kill. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do not drink blood. We do not slaughter animals and we do not kill.
And I want to know, uh, when do you serve your Lord daily or at night? Okay. What? Says when do you serve the Lord, oh, your Lord, hours. as he says, <laughs> daily or every time? All, every, time. all the time. All the time. Depends on the state of the moon. The divine is. The divine okay. Is After the break, we'll continue to find out more about pagan rites and worship, as well as its seasonal festivals. People today want to relate back to nature, mm. back to the environment back to things that they can personally believe in. We're talking about paganism in South Africa, a growing way of life, some call it, and some call it a religion. Let's find out a little bit more. Uh, do, is there a specific type, type of person who is a potential candidate? Felicia, maybe if I can say something. I think as South Africa is in a period of transition, so people's belief systems and their religious orientation is going through a transition. And I've heard the kind of questions being asked here in the audience in terms of how did these gods suddenly appear and disappear and then there was Christian gods and how do they come back again? Uh, people must understand historically, people didn't believe in nothing. Before there was Christianity, people believed in something. And what did they believe in? Nature. Mm -hmm. And nature, a tree, a rock, a plant, an animal, all personified or took on the symbolic value of a deity. Uh, and that is what's re-emerging at the end of this millennium. And in South Africa, to put it in this specific context, people today want to relate back to nature, mm. back to the environment, back to things that they can personally believe in. And we're going to talk now about practices um, in the pagan context. People want to take ownership, if you wish, mm. of how they believe, of how they practice, and directly relate to the god or goddess or gods or goddesses that they believe are relevant to them and can strengthen and support them in their daily lives and where they want to go, their families, their society. So it's really linking back to our root religions. Are you finding that you have, you have blacks now becoming part of the pagan society? Uh, because I noticed, I asked you, if I can just have the mic, I'll get, I'll get, back, I'll get it back to you. I, I asked you who you came with and you say, we all came with Beverly, we belong to Beverly, something. No, no, Also no. to Don, sorry. No, 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 no. I actually said I work with Don. Don is my boss. Oh. And I came here to come and support her. And we have other people that come from CNA too, uh, oh. to come and see what she tells oh, us okay. about paganism. Are you interested in it now? No. Thank no. you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to respond. By interested in Sangomaism? Uh, no, I, no. I do have to respond and say that um, between Jane and I, we are both shamans. She belongs to a Christian church where she is involved in prophecy, visions, and interpretation of those dreams and visions. Whereas she comes from a Christian church, I come from a pagan background, and without... Um, without um, every week we no doubt compare our dreams and our abilities to interpret them. My floor manager had a question here. Let's talk, John. Uh, uh, what, what I wanted to say was that I'm, I'm very surprised by the fact that uh, black people are ex expecting us blacks to be really understanding of their ancestral background. Now you see white is praying the, mm -hmm. the, the, <laughs> the ancestors. Uh, yeah, the whites are praying the ancestors and of which where we come from, we had uh, God in many different names. Muzimu, not Nkulunkulu, because Nkulunkulu is the interpretation from the Bible. Umzimu, mm. Umvelengani, O Okamata. Those, those were the original names that we had in, in, in our faith. And our faith was, we praying God the Almighty through the ancestors. And this is what these guys are all about. But now the blacks are so indoctrinated with Christianity that everything they're critical of. It. What they say, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to their to the interpretation. I'm listening to their interpretation. The fact that you don't follow the Christian faith, you become a cast out automatically, and which is wrong because even our ancestors don't recruit. We don't belong to a church because I pray with my mother. I pray with my grandmother. This is a home thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The moment you start organizing, it means you're commercializing the religion. You see what I'm saying? That's what Christianity has done. Oh, well, that's interesting. The ancestors, the ancestral beliefs, what happened to that, especially to the African people? Amadlos. 
Remember Majlos? You want to talk about the Majlos? I want to hear about the Majlos. Uh huh. <laughs> you see, Felicia, the problem is that are Majlos of ours. Ne? Firstly, it will oppose them because we'll have to slaughter the cows, of which it will, it will be against them because they don't slaughter, they don't kill anything. So the Amadlos, they need the cows. We must slaughter the cows because we will be believing on uh, Amadlos, the ancestors. <laughs> and the other thing, they are telling us of the Cortez. There's no Cortez or whatever, or Cortez or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Where the did Cordessa come from? <laughs> the other thing, what we know, uh, maybe from the Bible, we, we knew about Moses or whatever. So from them, we don't know anything. They just told uh, 25,000 uh, 25, years ago. <laughs> Who was the first uh, that uh, panic, panic, what? Pekin of, the, of theirs. They don't know because now the thing is. Moses was what? Moses. He says Moses oh, was a okay. pagan. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a big favor, my friend. He says Moses was a pagan. He says Abram was a pagan. We heard that he Mary was, was. He was not a pagan. Jesus and the other thing that I would, I, I would like okay. to oh, ask you. Somebody friend. says Jesus was as well. Oh. 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 I want to ask them. Oh, no. uh, just to ask them one favor. Ne? Carry on with that pagan of yours. But do not convince our lovely Christians mm. in, here yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Um, okay. And we're not trying to convert I just want to ask something. Carry on with Christianity, but do not condemn us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds quite fair. Quite sounds fair. Can I hear you? You're saying? No, I just said, um, Donna already explained, we are not trying to convert anybody. Mm. We are just trying to explain it to people who might be searching for their home, who might be searching for the right religion. And that's the only reason why we are trying to explain our concepts, but we are not trying to, um, uh, like Christians say, this is the only way. And this is the only problem we have with Christianity. We have respect for any religion, whatever religion it can be. And we believe everyone is right. Because if you believe you're a Christian, this is your way and this is my way. Mm -hmm. But the only problem arises when somebody says, no, my way is the only one. Mm -hmm. Correct. We just ask respect Alicia? as we give respect to them. Okay, as it says, we just ask respect yeah. As we give respect yeah. to As them. As we give respect to them. Let's, let's hear some more there. Somebody has my mic. Let's see. I firstly just want to say, I'm not a pagan, but my best friend is. We see each other every day, and not once has he tried to intrigue me into this paganism. Mm -hmm. I'm here out of my free will mm -hmm. to find out more about him. Who's your friend? It's Herman, mm -hmm. up there. Oh, Herman. She's a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that kind of friend. Oh. So I just want to say that it's not, he's not trying to get me into paganism at all. We as pagans only ask for tolerance from other people. We, we even have that in our little info thingy on the Pagan Federation. We are only asking for tolerance. We are not seeking people to be like us. We are not saying, hey, listen to us. You were wrong all along. Well, this is the right way. Just let us be. But what form of expression do pagan rites and worship take? Okay, we, well, let me just tell you that as well. We try and reattune ourselves to the cycles of the moon and the sun and the seasons. We are so disconnected from nature nowadays. And um, we are trying to reconnect ourselves with that through rites. Halloween. Mm -hmm. being one of them. It is actually called Sawin. Mm -hmm. That is the correct term. It is in this hemisphere, not celebrated on the 31st of October as it is overseas. Mm -hmm. We are in this hemisphere. We are tune ourselves to the way the sun and the moon moves in this hemisphere, what not the, overseas. What are the other holidays that people know or festivals? I know oh. Halloween, definitely. For example... Bruno? Well, there's midwinter. Yeah. Uh -huh. For midwinter for us would happen on the 22nd of June. Uh -huh. We have um, uh, midsummer, which 21st of December, which is very close to Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, we have Beltane. Beltane. So what do you do when you celebrate? Depends on the holiday, um, on the festival. Yes. Yeah. It does depend on the festival. The festival would inevitably encapsulate 
the time of the year mm -hmm. that we are attempting to attune ourselves with. For example, when we are setting in to the winter months, we would be celebrating the last bringing in of the corn and the harvests. Mm -hmm. We would typically have harvest type foods on the altar. There would be uh, games and um, things related to that time of the year. Those are our seasons, those are our public festivals. Those are called the Sabbats and they have nothing to do with sinister connotations. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to close now. But uh, any final comments there from, from the people who are mic'd up? Any young people here who feel that they're going to follow in that direction? I, just I, I see some beautiful little faces there. Let me just hear from them. Uh -oh. <laughs> any young people, are you also following that direction? Yes. What have you seen that you like? Um, I've seen winter solstice, which is midwinter, and I did enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, Why have you decided you want to do it? Because uh, your mom does it? No, I, I'm also a um, pagan Christian. Mm -hmm. So I, I like paganism, but I also I'm half-half. Do you find that at school kids tease you and they say you're weird? No, no, I act weird, so they think I'm weird anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find out from those. I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you also thinking of going in that direction? No, I'll just follow my own way. What's your own way, sweetheart? Well, my mother's way. <laughs> What's your mom's way? <laughs> well, that's my mom there. <laughs> Where's your mom? Bev. Oh, Bev, Bev, she's cute. So you're <laughs> going to follow your mom's way? Yeah. She's, you're so cute, bless your heart. <laughs> Today we allowed the opportunity to unveil paganism in essence but the next debate really I want us to go on to the pluses the minuses and let's have uh, some of the key leaders of the Christian religion also here we have followers of Christianity but I don't think we have the key people who will be here to debate it uh, profusely in closing let me just um, get a few words from you let's start off with you Beverly 30 seconds Change perception out there. This is the time I'm giving you some, under, some platform uh, to change perceptions. Yeah, I just, I just like to say, you know, that um, as, as a, a person that has followed an ancient coven as part of my family, we do so very peacefully, and, and most people that have known me for many years ha have not even been aware of the fact that I have followed this or that our family has followed this for so long because it has been peaceful, it's unobtrusive. We don't push it on, we don't solicitate other people to come into what we believe. We carry on our way, we move in, in circles, and we're very quiet about it. We don't have to go out there and say, rah, rah, look at me, I'm this and I'm that, I, you must follow what we're doing because we're the best. We go ahead, we do good things for people, we make sure that we don't step on anyone's toes, and we look at life in a good and positive way. Who do you pray to, to ultimately possibly, what's the correlation maybe? Felicia, there is, um, it, we tend to take, society tends to take this um, who do you pray to story. They take a Christian and they say, this is what a Christian does. That's right. And they compare everybody else That's to true. that. Mm -hmm. And I take exception to that. I'm a pagan. I do things my way. What I do is very, very personal. We do have public occasions when people are invited. Angelique? Well, change perceptions for me. I just like again to say I hope that this has helped us to, or people, the public, to understand that we have got nothing to do with Satanism because we are being persecuted. I wear the, uh, this pentagram openly because I want people to ask me what does it mean so that I can explain to them what it means. It's got nothing to do with Satanism. Yeah. But do you want to say something? Don't be uh, guided by your fear. Uh, and, but if you have to judge us, judge us by our deeds, yeah. not by what you hear, not by rumors. Because I, when I was very young, I used to judge people. Uh, you know, if, when I heard the word pagan, I judged it. Mm -hmm. But when I started reading about it, I realized it was a very gentle religion, a very loving religion. And as some uh, member of the audience said, it's the, the guiding thing for us Wiccans is, and it harm none, do, that you, do what you will. Mm -hmm. You may not harm anything. Finally. Um, I believe that history was made this evening and I want to thank you for that and I want to say that I trust that we're going to move forward in the spirit of what history is made of as is indicative of where this great country is going at the moment. Thank you.
We hope that tonight's program will create a better understanding of the world of pagans and witches. Good night and thanks for coming. African Americans living in South Africa